Our text for this morning's message is recorded in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 13. May he, God, strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for giving us your son Jesus, and we thank you that through Jesus and by the power of your Holy Spirit, you have brought us into your family. Lord, we pray that as we hear your word again today, that you will strengthen our hearts so that we will be ready for the day when Jesus comes again. In your name we pray, amen. Dear friends of Jesus, our Savior, is your heart healthy? Now, there are a number of ways that doctors can determine the health of your heart. Echocardiogram, electrocardiogram, cardiac catheterization, stress test, just to name a few. And then there are things that you can do yourself. You can take your blood pressure and you can also take your heart rate. Now, back at the end of September, when I went, into, went to see my doctor, as I was sitting in the room waiting for him, he comes into the room and he says to me right away, he says, do you want to meet your maker sooner than you have to, with a little smirk on his face? So I knew what he had to say was serious, but it wasn't that serious. He says, first of all, you're overweight, which I already knew. And he says, technically, according to the charts, you are obese. And then he said something that I had never heard before. He says, I'm concerned about the inflammation in your blood. Now, I had no idea what he was talking about. I had visited him many times. I had my blood work done. We have never talked about inflammation in the blood. And he says the problem with inflammation, if there's too much inflammation, it can then uh, have problems with the blood vessels, and there could be a problem. And so he says, I'm going to put you on an anti-inflammation diet. You're going to do it for one month. No, let's do it. Let's do it for two months, and then you come back, and we'll, get your, we'll look your, over your labs again. So I had no idea what is an anti-inflammation diet. He said, well, it's this. It's water and herbal tea. That's it. No caffeine. It's fish and chicken, beans, rice, certain fruits, and vegetables. And so that means no carbs, no sugar, no caffeine, uh, no uh, dairy, and nothing else that I was eating at the time. And then he said, I'll see you in two months. Well, the first thing I did, as soon as I left the doctor's office, I immediately went to Chili Pepper (laughs) and had a bean and cheese burrito and a cheese quesadilla because I didn't have an anti-inflammation breakfast that day, and so that day was already shot. So, because I knew the next day, game on. And for nine weeks, I've been strictly following this inflammation diet, with the exception of, anybody know? Thanksgiving. But even then, it wasn't that bad. It didn't cheat too much. And so, I've been following that. And tomorrow, I see the doctor and will check the labs again. You've heard of food that they call heart smart. Now, why is all of this important? Because the condition of your heart really is vital for your life. It's that important. Well, today we begin the season of Advent. And this is a time of year where most people, what they're doing is getting ready for Christmas. They're getting ready for for the new year, but the season of Advent is really a great time to assess our hearts to make sure that they are ready when Jesus comes again, because God is concerned about your heart. He's so concerned because the condition of your heart will determine whether you get to live with God forever in his kingdom or whether you die apart from God forever. It's that serious. When God created Adam and Eve, he gave them perfect hearts. Not only are they perfect physically, they were working the way God wanted them to do, pumping blood throughout their body, but they were also in a perfect relationship with God. 
Adam and Eve loved the Lord your God with all their heart, with all their soul, and with all their mind. They loved each other with all their heart. In their heart, there was no pride, there was no conceit, there was no envy, there was no sin, only love for God and love for one another. But we all know what happened because of sin. It changed everything, including their hearts. Their hearts were no longer set on God. Their hearts were no longer set on each other. Their hearts were now set on themselves, full of selfishness. King David knew this very well. After God sent Nathan to King David to confront him, on committing adultery with Bathsheba and then having uh, Bathsheba's husband Uriah murdered, David gives a great confession of sin in Psalm 51. In fact, I encourage you to read Psalm 51 this week. It's a great confession of sin. And the verse I want to point out this morning is verse 10. Psalm 51, verse 10, David says, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. In other words, God, give me a new heart. We also read in Jeremiah chapter 16, that the people at that time were living, uh, they were more evil than their forefathers. And so we read about their hearts. In Je Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 12, it says, But you have behaved more wickedly than your fathers. See how each of you is following the stubbornness of his evil heart instead of obeying me. And then in Jeremiah chapter 17, verses uh, Jeremiah chapter 17 verses 9 and 10 and talks of, again he talks about the condition of a sinful heart Jeremiah chapter 17 verses 9 and 10 it says the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure who can understand it I the Lord search the heart and examine the mind to reward a man according to his conduct according to what his deeds deserve sounds pretty bleak doesn't it Jeremiah is telling us that a sinful heart is incurable and that when God examines a heart apart from Christ, that that person is going to get what they deserve, namely eternal death. Reminds me also of Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15, verses 19 to 20, Jesus says, he says, for out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. These are what makes a man unclean. But eating with unwashed hands does not make him unclean. Now, the reason Jesus is saying these things is because the Pharisees and teachers of the law, they accused his disciples for being unclean because they were eating their food without, without washing their hands. And so Jesus says that it's not what is on the outside, meaning dirt, what makes a person unclean. It's what's on the inside, sin, that makes a person unclean. And so all throughout Scripture, we read that the condition of a sinful heart, a heart full of sin, makes that person unclean. A man by the name of Ron Lockman went, into, went to the hospital for surgery. In those days, you actually went to the hospital the night before and they would do some assessments, they would ask all kinds of questions and get you ready for the surgery. One of the questions the nurse asked was, have you ever had surgery before? Ron Lockman said yes. He said, what kind of surgery did you have? He said, I had open heart surgery. Now, this caught the nurse off guard because she was looking through the paperwork, through the file, and she didn't see any indication that he had open-heart surgery. He, she didn't see any visible scars that he had open-heart surgery. So she said, when did you have open-heart surgery? And then with a great big smile on his face, Ron Lockman said, the day God gave me faith in Jesus Christ, he gave me a brand new heart. 
I love that story because not only is it a great witness to this nurse about God's grace and the new heart that was given to him in Jesus Christ, but it's also true. Because we just read that the heart, the sinful heart is incurable. And so what we need is not a heart transplant. If that were the case, then God would just be transplanting sinful hearts to other sinful beings. What we need is a brand new heart. And that's what we read in Ezekiel chapter 11. In Ezekiel chapter 11, verse, beginning with verse 19, it says this. I will give them an undivided heart and put a new spirit in them. I will remove from them their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. Then they will follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. They will be my people and I will be their God. But as for those whose hearts are devoted to the vile images and detestable idols, I will bring down on their own heads what they have done, declares the sovereign Lord. It says, for those who have been given a new heart, where the old heart of stone has been removed and given a new heart by the Spirit of God, it says that person is now part of God's family. He is their God and they are his people. But for those who live only according to their old sinful nature, a heart full of sin, again, it says that they will get what they deserve. And so God is prophesying and he is promising that anyone who is filled with the Holy Spirit will be given a heart of flesh, will be given a brand new heart. That God has removed our old heart of stone and given us a new heart. And if you are a Christ follower, it means God has done the same for you. It either happened to you the day you were baptized, when you were baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, or when you first heard the word of God and believed, God gave you a brand new heart. Now, we have to be careful that we don't go back to our former way of life. It certainly can be that way for an addict. A person can become clean and then all of a sudden they're tempted to wanting to go back to, to using or doing what they were doing before. And so for most people, what do they need? They need to get away from the environment. They need to get away from the people that they were hanging out with. They need a new beginning altogether. Aren't we also tempted in the same way? Yes, God has given us a new heart. God has given us a living heart. He has given us a heart that is not dead but alive. But again, we are tempted over and over again to going back and doing the same things over and over again. So listen to this prayer in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 13 again. 1 Thessalonians 3, 13, it says, May He, God, strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. And so the question I have for you again this morning is, is your heart healthy? Is your heart ready for the day when Jesus comes again? And again, the season of Advent is a great time to assess your heart, to to assess the condition of your heart so that you will be ready when Jesus comes again. It's a great time to reflect. It's a great time to confess your sins and receive God's forgiveness. It's a great time to cast aside the evil deeds of darkness. So how do we do this? We do this by allowing God to strengthen our hearts every time we as we spend time with him in his word. Because every time we spend time in God's word, he is strengthening our hearts. Because by the power of God's word, as the Holy Spirit is working through that word, the Holy Spirit is assuring us that we have been given new hearts. By the power of God's word, the Holy Spirit working through that word will then convict us of our sin and then move us to confess. By the power of God's word, as the Holy Spirit works through that word, the Holy Spirit then will assure us that all our sins are forgiven in Jesus Christ. And by the power of God's word, as the Holy Spirit is working through that word, the Holy Spirit will assure us without a doubt that we are clean through the blood of Jesus Christ and through water. And that now, now God sees us and, as holy and blameless in his sight. Isn't that incredible? That's how God sees us. 
as holy, set apart, from him, set apart for him, and blameless because he has forgiven us all our sins. For there is no, now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. This is who God has made us to be as Christ followers so that we are ready for the day when Jesus comes again. I think we all agree that this time of the year for most people is crazy and hectic and it can become a burden to a lot of people. Now, a lot of people love this time of year. They love getting ready for Christmas and the holidays. But it also can be a time where we're distracted from really what's most important. And so I really want to encourage you again to take, use this season of Advent to reflect to reflect on why Jesus had to come in the first place. Why did God have to send his only son, Jesus, into this sinful world? He did it out of love for you and me and the whole world. He did it because we are sinners who needed a new heart, who needed to be forgiven and who could not save ourselves. He did it so that he could send Jesus into the world to save us. This is a great time of year to reflect on what Jesus really means and what it's all about doesn't mean that we can't enjoy the celebrations and getting ready. But the most important thing we can do is get ready for the day when Jesus comes again. So again, I want to encourage you, spend time each day with God in his word. Reflect on God's grace and mercy given to you in Jesus Christ. And he will strengthen your heart and keep you ready for the day when Jesus comes again. May God grant it for Jesus' sake. Amen. Please pray with me. Gracious Father, we do thank you that you saw the condition of our heart, and so you sent Jesus into the world to save us, to give us new hearts by your Spirit, and that you have forgiven us all our sins. Lord, when we're tempted to go back to our former way of life, we pray that by your Spirit that you will convict us, that you will cause us to stop and repent, and to be assured that you have forgiven us all our sins. Lord, give us a passion. Give us the time to just stop during this busy season to reflect on your word, to spend time with you so that we know that through your word you can continue to strengthen our hearts so that we are ready for the day when Jesus comes again. Lord, thank you for making us ready for that day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.